Hello and welcome to Postcard in a Pint. I'm Rachel. And I'm Wills. And today we're exploring the city of Liverpool. And Liverpool's only about 45 minutes from our house, which is pretty cool. And today we're going to go to, where we're we going to go? We're going to visit the cavern. We're going to go down the docks, Mrs. We're we bombed out church. Going to go to bombed out church. We're going to go to the Baltic corner. L1, Baltic corner. a Baltic triangle. Baltic triangle. L1. L1, where, where else are we going to go? Along the Mersey. Loads of places. Along the go. Mersey. Come with us as we explore. Liverpool. Liverpool. So we've parked at the King's Dock, postcode for you, L18LT. Um, we were going to park somewhere else, but when we came to Liverpool a few days ago, um, if, you're, if you've not driven in Liverpool before the pandemic, please don't. They've dug up all the centre, they've knocked down the flyover, we couldn't even find the place we wanted to park. So here we are at the King's Dock, our car has got a lovely view of the Anglican Cathedral and out over Liverpool. Here we've got the MS Bank Arena, also known as the Echo, if you're a local, because that's what it used to be called. And I've seen the Mighty Maiden here. Uh -huh. I think you might find you've seen Lord of the Dance as well. I've seen Lord of the Dance. That looks cold. in jelly beans and the beetles <laughs> here we are in the Albert docks these were revolutionary in design because it meant the ships could be loaded and unloaded straight from the warehouses the Albert docks quickly became really popular so much so that more warehouses and more docks were needed so the Albert dock kind of became more of a storehouse it was storehouse for cotton brandy Silk and ivory. Ooh, After the war, the docks weren't needed so much, and shipping and cargo wasn't such a big thing in Liverpool. The docks really did fall into decline. They finally closed in '72, but were awarded a grant to be uh, rejuvenated. Uh, in, and I think work started in 1984, or it opened in 1984. It's now one of the most popular tourist attractions in Liverpool. It's full of bars, cafes, definitely come down here. There's loads of museums, there's a the Tate, there's the Maritime. So uh, definitely you could spend a good morning here and it's a great day out. Liverpool is a really special city for both of us. For me, it's where I went to college and I also have connections through my um, godmother's side of the family, which I'll tell you about later. And for Wills, through his mum's side of the family, he has quite a few Beatles connections, which he'll tell you all about later. A couple of Beatles stories for you. Go on. Um, back in the day, my mum's dad used to be a driving instructor and he taught Ringo Starr to drive. Hey. Not only that, <gasps> but my mum's gran, I think it was, her butcher boy, George Harrison. And not only that, wow. her window cleaner, John Lennon. Wow, three! Cool, eh? You are the walrus. Is a lamb banana. Super lamb banana. No, this is a lamb banana. Oh, all right. Okay, the super lamb banana rolls. Okay, was I'm going to have to read this now? Was the original was made in 1998 for the Art Trans Pennine exhibition, and that's further up in Liverpool, and it's much much bigger. Apparently, both lambs and bananas were exported and imported from the docks. I take it bananas were imported and lambs were exported. But a Japanese guy came up with a design, and I'm going to read the sentence from Wikipedia. An ironic comment of the dangers of genetic engineering. That's what happens 
when you cross a banana with a lamb. I used to choreograph for Fred Olsen Cruise Lines and I saw on Facebook today that all my friends who still work for them have just finished a setup today and have just got off this very ship. Although I didn't know it was in Liverpool, so I wish we'd come here earlier and I could have seen all my friends. Strange. Behind me is the iconic Liver Buildings, topped by the two Liver Birds. And it's said if the Liver Birds ever leave, then the city of Liverpool will no longer exist. So as you can see, they're chained down. They're known as Bella and Bertie. One looks out to sea to protect the sailors, and one looks out over the city to protect Liverpool. Um, locals, though, have their own interpretation of this. They say it's Bella who looks out for the sea. She likes to see if there's any handsome, good-looking sailors coming ashore. And Bertie looks out over the city to see if the pubs are open. Next door to the library building is the Cunard building. And it is a beautiful, beautiful building in the style of an uh, Italian Renaissance and Greek Revival modelled on an Italian palace. This was the home of the Cunard Shipping Company until the 1960s. It used to house the passenger facilities for first, second and third class for all those making the voyage from Liverpool across uh, to New York, the transatlantic voyage. Behind me over there is Albion House, or 30 James Street, and that building was the home of the White Star Shipping Company until it moved to Southampton. And did you know that in 1912, when the Titanic sank, uh, the officials were too scared to come outside and tell the people, and they stood on the balcony and they read out the names of the dead, which is quite quite morbid, quite morbid. So even though the Titanic never visited Liverpool, it was registered to Liverpool, so it had Liverpool on its booty, and yeah, this was the home of the White Star Shipping Company. And I forgot to say a minute ago, it's now a Titanic-themed hotel. One of my ties to Liverpool is that my godmother's father was a captain for the White Star Line. He wasn't on the Titanic. He used to do the um, Liverpool Australia route quite a lot. And I remember my godmother, bless God bless her soul, um, she had Alzheimer's and in her later years she'd often come down to the Mersey and wait for her father's ship to come home again. Which is sad, but lovely. I forgot to tell you his name. His name was Captain Thomas Ernest Musgrave. And another maritime fact for you, connected with Liverpool, is my mum's grandfather, a chap called uh, George Arthur Hope Flynn, was the captain of the SS Tyndareus, which was um, again registered to Liverpool. And this one did get hit by a torpedo, but uh, he is uh, commended with saving, I think, about 1,400 lives or something. There's lots of information about it on the internet. But yeah, he was he was me mum's granddad. Cool, Hero. Eh? Hero. Here's the Fab Four, let's go to the cabin where it all began. We're going in, come on. Well, what can I tell you about the cabin? Here's some facts for you. It opened in 1957 and was the centre of the Merseybeat scene and has opened and closed a number of times since. It even moved across the road for a while. There are now 33 steps down to the venue, originally there were only 18. The Quarrymen featuring John Lennon played here in 1957, Paul joined the band the following year and they played again. The first Beatle to play the cavern was actually Ringo, when he played there in early 1957 with the Eddie Clayton Skiffle Group. Stevie Wonder played there at the age of only 15. Ken Dodd was made the first Honorary Life member in 1964. The original entrance is where the fire door is now, next to the Silla Black statue. 
but the current door has still been there since 1966. The basement area of the venue is about 70% of the original site. Absolutely fantastic, definitely go if you uh, if you come here. This is actually the original entrance, but right now, Wills, I am starving. Fancy some food? Oh yeah. Let's head over to the Baltic Triangle. We're now in an area called the Baltic Triangle. Um, I'm not sure why it's called the Baltic Triangle. You reckon it's because? It's something to do with the Baltic was the area that, that the, the trading was done in. Anyway, it fell into disrepair, there was loads of empty warehouses and there's now kind of a programme on where all these warehouses are being like kind of regenerated, rejuvenated. They've got loads of cultural scene, art scene, microbreweries, breweries, hippie stuff and that. Basically, it's, a bit it's, hipster, a, isn't it? it's an area that's way too cool and way too young for us. But the brilliant market called the Baltic Market with loads of food great- Food market. Food market, sorry, with loads of great street food. And we hopefully are gonna try and get some lunch off the street market. There's a yellow submarine there. Oh, there is, there's a yellow submarine. We all live in it. Food on the map, haven't we? Yeah, we ordered it on Uber Eats. We both ordered chicken souvlaki. We're feeling a bit Greek today. It was pretty straightforward. You just uh, go on to Uber Eats, change your location, and it'll bring up all the restaurants in here. And you go on the menus and add it to your basket and add your table number, check out, jobs are good. Enough. I started already. How good is that? <laughs> Like we're in Greece. Yeah. Going on. Savlaki and chips. <laughs> is that good, lad? This is good. This is good. You could almost be in Mikola. <laughs> recommend that Baltic market enough. The food was absolutely amazing. So fresh and cheap. 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 <laughs> we were here was in a summer time pre-pandemic and there was a live band on it was full of people in drinking gin they were dancing on the tables this is definitely the place to come if you want a party to late unless you're old like us <laughs> Bold Street to the bombed out church. Not the original, but still a lamb banana. You're a lamb banana. You're a lamb banana. You're a lamb banana. Me, we have St Luke's Church, or known by the locals as the Bombed Out Church. Well, the boom, the Bombed Out Church. No, the Bombed Out oh, Church. Okay. <laughs> um, it didn't do too well in the uh, Blitz um, of Liverpool in May ooh, 1941. It hasn't had a roof since then. It's now used as a memorial, an exhibition site, and for events as well. And we can hear a sound check going on now. So I don't know who's here tonight. This is the Empire Theatre, one of a number of theatres in the city. This building is the second theatre built on the site and opened on March the 9th, 1925. Anyone who's everyone has played the Empire, from Frank Sinatra to the Beatles, Iron Maiden to Julie Garland, even Rachel's performed here back in the day. 
I've seen tons of shows at the Empire over the years, but my oldest memory is back in 1980 when I saw Les Dawson in Pantomime here, and Windsor Davis and Melvin Hayes the following year. This is us walking down from Lime Street Station down to the main street in Liverpool. When I was in college this was the main shopping area for Liverpool where you did all your shopping and the other great bit of Liverpool was the Albert Dock but you didn't go to the bit in the middle. If you wanted to get to Albert Dock you took the bus or you took the train. To coincide with Liverpool being the city of culture they brilliantly redeveloped this entire middle bit. It's now called L1. Here you'll find all your designer shops, all your chain shops, any shop you wish to find, you'll find there. So if you're into your shopping, this is the place for you. This is our little jolly to Liverpool with a beer at the White Star. Which was uh, an small Victorian pub named after the old shipping company. That's where the Beatles used to hang out. So uh, we've had a good day. There's still loads more we could have seen. So that for another time. We've had an absolutely brilliant time today. There's so much we haven't seen. We've not been to the cathedrals. We haven't been to Chinatown. All saving it for another day. But we've had an absolutely fantastic day. I am worn out. We have walked for miles. Cheers. So as you can see. We're not at the White Star Pub anymore. We've just we... got home and we're knackered. Do you know what? It took us an hour 45 to get home from Liverpool. It should take us 45 minutes. It took us an hour 45. Guys, do not drive in uh, Liverpool at the moment. They've dug up pretty much every road they've got, haven't they? Just avoid Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, well, no, don't avoid Liverpool. Liverpool's brilliant. It's rubbish. <laughs> we've had no, a... it's fab. Yeah, we've had a brilliant day. I'll tell you what, this is my best tip for Liverpool. Drive your car to Hooton, park it for a quid, get the train. Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then you can get out and you can avoid all the roadworks. So, anyway, on to why we're at home. For the second video running, um, what happened? We went to record our beer bit at the end and I forgot to hit record. But which is better because last week it was me that forgot to hit record. So, uh, one all. One all. Postcard and a pint, not just crap. Consistently crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's been your favourite bit about Liverpool today? Uh, I love the cavern, I love the food hall, I love just being out and about, Jose. Mm -hmm. I, I love down by the waterfront, possibly, well, possibly because <laughs> uh, I did, maybe the weather was slightly better then, but I love the water and I love ships, but I did love the vibe in the cavern. cavern. The cavern, in the, the cavern. cavern. And also, yeah, I love the, uh, the, the Baltic food hall as well, that was... Uh, Brilliant, really great to see Blackie. Felt like I was in uh, Mykonos. Not really. Not really. <laughs> Not really. So, uh, Holiday. <laughs> hope you've Holiday. enjoyed today. Everything we've done today, it's very doable in a day in Liverpool. But if you want to go in the museums and that as well, make Liverpool your uh, little holiday, your staycation this year. Little staycation. Yeah, spend a couple of days there. There's so much to do. There's so much we didn't do at the cathedral. We didn't do Chinatown. We didn't go to some of the other like Beatles, like John's house. And, and there's a whole bar street as yeah. well, isn't there? There's an old bar culture. Bah, yeah, thing. behind Bold Street and over there. So yeah, there's so much more to see and do. For cool people. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and it's made you want to get out and go to Liverpool and enjoy the city and as we say oh no oh no no, no. what have we got to do before we say that <laughs> we say it will be really useful if you like the video subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment that's the one <laughs> so now as we say in postcard in the pint cheers to cheers the good to time my beagles, by the way yeah, do you know what? Little, little, uh, little secret. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Covid, Covid, Covid. Depending, we might be going there in Again. a few weeks. Okay. So on that note. Okay. Cheers, cheers to, to the, the good, good times. Time. Scouse bloke takes his new missus for something to eat. Sitting there, hipster type place. He says, uh, "Here, 
do you like avocado? She goes, no, not even past me test. What? Oh. <laughs>